all the religions of the world. Pontiff told assembled Buddhist monks, Zoroastrian priests, Catholic cardinals, Hindu gurus, American Indian shamans, Jewish rabbis, and the ecumenical clergy that all must join in condemning the Christian fundamentalists who abuse speech and whose efforts are converting others and incite hatred and violence. All present were in one accord on two key points. One, Pope John Paul II was endorsed by consensus as the planet's chief spiritual guide and overseer. Two, religious fundamentalists that refuse to go along with the global ecumenical movement are to be silenced. They must be denounced as dangerous extremists full of hate. Right now, you might be endorsing the ecumenical movement and not even know it. But, if you willingly know that you are against this new world order movement, you will be labeled as a dangerous extremist and maybe even be called a terrorist. So what is this ecumenical movement? Let's ask the World Council of Churches. The word ecumenical is derived from the Greek term oikomene, which may be translated as the whole inhabited world. Now there is one obstacle that is preventing the ecumenical movement from uniting the whole inhabited world. Simply stated, Adler argued that we will not be able to attain world peace until we attain cultural unity, but Adler argues that there is only one obstacle to unity. Christianity. Now when they talk about Christianity, 
They're not talking about Christians as a whole. They are talking about a specific group. To find out who this specific group is, let's ask the Freemasons themselves. And according to Gary, the ancient mystery religions has passed down to Kabbalism, Gnosticism, Knights Templars, all the way to the Rosicrucians, and then to the Freemasons. And the Freemasons control Marxism, American European secret political societies, international banking elite, and the World Council of Churches. Kyung from the World Council of Churches declared, to witness about Jesus Christ to another person is in reality an act of violence. When reminded that Jesus said in John 14 6 that he is the only way, Kyung said Jesus was mistaken. So according to the ecumenical movers, the religious fundamentalists that must be silenced are the Bible believing Christians who witness about Jesus. Now there are people who claim to be Bible believing Christians and Christians that witness about Jesus, but are still a part of this movement. Right now, I'm going to show you how Rome is going to determine if you are with this new world, new age, ecumenical movement, or if you're a dangerous heretic that must be silenced. That all people have the right to work, not to work, at the same time, so that they can be together. And one of the things that's happening to us is that we're all uh, we're, we're getting on these very different schedules and we're having a very hard time figuring out how to come together. And what the Sabbath does is it creates this situation in which there's just a structured period in which we can come together. So is this the first step? And maybe that is the answer to my next question. Is going to say, what's the first step if, if someone's watching and they say, you know what, I, I need to do that? Um, basically, the first step is to do it yourself. Mm. Um, you, you bring it into your life and try to get your family to do it with you. Uh, but one of the things I argue in the book is one of the ideas, the political ideas sort of embedded in the Sabbath, is the idea that as a society we have the right to take control of our time and say maybe as a democratic society we want to decide to bring back some rules about what can and cannot be done one day a week. And we might want to start thinking about ways to encourage people not to work on that day. Ah, very good advice. The All our lives, we have been taught that the Lord's Day, the Sabbath, the day we must worship God, the day we must attend church, the day we must rest, and a day that must be kept holy, was to be on Sunday. It was not until now that I began to see the truth not by outside sources, but by the very one that is pushing for Sunday observance, and the one that changed times and laws. And as a part of this crusade to save Sunday, Pope John Paul II writes an apostolic letter calling to keep Sunday holy. He also writes in that letter, only in the 4th century did the civil law of the Roman Empire recognize the weekly reoccurrence, determining that on the day of the sun, the judges, the people of the cities, and the various trade corporations would not work. Doesn't this sound remarkably like the Freemason ran singing in? The Sabbath is two things to me. One, it's this incredible idea. It's really one of the great ideas in human history. It's transformed the world. It's affected the way we've lived for thousands of years. The Sabbath is not just that people, all people have the right not to work, which by the way was a radical and new idea when it was first conceived and written down in the Fourth Commandment. It's not only that. It's that all people have the right to work, not to work, at the same time, so that they can be together, together, together. And the Pope goes further in saying that Christians will naturally strive to ensure that civil legislation respects their duty to keep Sunday holy. 
Yes, the Pope is right when he says that Christians will strive for Sunday legislation because it is the people that are getting brainwashed to think that we even need Sunday legislation. So is this the first step? And maybe that is the answer to my next question. Is going to say, what's the first step if, he, if someone's watching and they say, you know what, I need to do that? Um, basically, the first step is to do it yourself. Um, you, you bring it into your life and try to get your family to do it with you. Uh, but one of the things I argue in the book is one of the ideas, the political ideas sort of embedded in the Sabbath is the idea that as a society we have the right to take control of our time and say maybe as a democratic society we want to decide to bring back some rules about what can and cannot be done one day a week and we might want to start thinking about ways to encourage people not to work on that day. Oh, very good advice. Wait a minute, when did she say that this law was first written? People, all people have the right not to work, which by the way was a radical and new idea when it was first conceived and written down in the fourth commandment. This commandment is very important because it reveals if you are a Bible believing Christian or a follower of man. Now let's see what the fourth commandment says. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Let's break this commandment down. The Sabbath is the Lord's day. And what day is the Sabbath? It is the seventh day, which is Saturday. And how do we remember the Sabbath and keep it holy? We should rest and do no work. By keeping these commandments, not only does it exalt God, but Jesus also. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus also said, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. What I want to look at now is to see if the commandments of the Roman Catholic Church is of God's or of man's. Now one way to find out if the Roman Catholic Church is teaching the doctrines and commandments of man or the commandments of God is just to ask Rome itself. One way of doing that is reading the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. And if we go to the question and answer page, it'll ask and answer our questions for us. Question? What is the third commandment? Answer, the third commandment is, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Question, why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? Answer, the Church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday and the Holy Ghost descended upon the Apostles on a Sunday. Question, by what authority did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? Answer, the Church substituted Sunday for Saturday by the plentitude of that divine power which Jesus Christ bestowed upon her. The Pope admits that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday to Sunday, therefore making it 